Hey crypto friends, for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Garrett and welcome to Altcoin Radar. Today you are going to learn how to identify overbought and oversold conditions while trading the crypto market. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, if you're interested in trading and would like to try out the same crypto exchange that I use on a daily basis, feel free to go ahead and check out the Maxi Crypto Exchange with the link in the video description down below. I personally love this exchange for two big reasons. The first one, I'm a huge altcoin nerd, as you guys know, and I love to buy and sell and trade all kinds of different altcoins on a regular basis. And they have over 1,500 different altcoins. In addition to that, as you guys can clearly see, they have some of the cheapest trading fees in the entire industry right now. So that's very nice because you get to keep more of your profits, all right? So guys, as we all know, okay, here's the thing. As we all know, crypto trading can be pretty, pretty darn exciting when we're winning, all right? But it also comes with a fair, fair, fair share of risks um, and uncertainties. And one of the key challenges in trading cryptocurrencies is identifying good buying opportunities to, or to buy low and sell high. Now, to do this effectively, traders often turn to technical analysis and tools like, you know, the RSI and moving averages to identify overbought and oversold levels. So before we dive too deep into this video, we will first go over what overbought and oversold actually means. So when we're talking about overbought levels, um, typically when a cryptocurrency is overbought, it typically means that the price has risen to a level where it might be due for a, you know, correction or reversal. And in addition to that, overbought conditions also suggest that, you know, buying pressure has pushed the price to pretty, you know, pretty uns unsustainable levels and a downturn may be in imminent, all right? Now, when we are talking about oversold levels, on the other hand, when a cryptocurrency is oversold, it pretty much indicates that its price has fallen to a level where, you know, it might be due for a bounce or a recovery. Um, oversold conditions typically suggest that, you know, selling pressure has pushed uh, the price to unsustainable lows and a potential upswing may be coming soon. All right. But it doesn't always work that way. Okay. It's not obviously as, you know, many of you guys know, nothing is guaranteed. Okay. But now that you guys know what overbought and oversold means, let's go ahead and explore, you know, some practical methods to identify these conditions in crypto trading. All right. Now, the first one that I'm going to talk about here is the relative strength index or the RSI. Um, the RSI is typically a widely used oscillator that basically measures the speed and change of price movements. It pretty much oscillates between zero down here, or sorry, this is 30, typically oscillates between zero and 100 with values above 70 indicating overbought conditions and values below 30 um, signaling oversold conditions, all right? Now, when the RSI crosses above 70, it may be an opportunity to consider selling or taking profits, all right? On the other hand, when it falls below the 30 level, it may be an opportunity to consider buying, all right? So as you guys can see here, I've got the RSI open right here. Um, typically what this is, is uh, the 30 level is right here, the bottom, the bottom most dotted line, and the 70 level is the top most dotted line. And then we've got 50, which is the neutral level in the center, all right? So as we can see here right now, just for an example, um, at the time of me filming this video, we can clearly see that Bitcoin is technically in oversold levels and could be due for, you know, a potential rise. Okay. But again, none of these are guaranteed, especially when we've got stuff like this going on right here um, on these moving averages. As you guys can see, we've got a death cross that's about to be happening right now. All right. It's typically when the 50 day and 200 day moving averages typically cross to the downside. All right. That's typically a death cross. All right. So, we could be dropping further and it could drop to, you know, the oversold, the, the deep oversold levels again, if that happens. All right. But if it continues to rise, it's going to continue to go upwards towards the overbought levels above, you know, around the 70 level. OK, which would typically mean it's time to take profits or time to start looking to take profits. OK, again, you should not be using these indicators solely to make your buying, buying and selling decisions, but they can help with confluence. OK. So guys, the next one I want to talk about here is Bollinger Bands, okay? So let me go ahead and get rid of my RSI here and go ahead and put some Bollinger Bands in here. Bollinger Bands, all right, there we go. So, whoops, let me go ahead and hide my moving average here so that that's not in the way. 
Whoops, I don't know why I got my paint tool on. All right, there we go. All right, so with Bollinger Bands, Bollinger Bands basically consist of a middle band, which is this orange line right here, which is typically a 20-day um, single moving average, um, and two outer bands that are uh, basically standard deviations pretty much away from the middle band. Uh, typically, when the price moves close together, you know, close, close to or touches uh, the upper band, it may suggest, you know, an overbought condition and touching the lower band may indicate an oversold condition. Typically, traders often look for price reversals when these bands are reached, okay? So as you guys can clearly see, right down here, we had a spot right down here where this happened, all right? As you can see with the Bollinger Bands, um, this bottom band right down here was typically, uh, you know, as you guys can clearly see, it hit that bottom band right there, which obviously signified that it was a very, very oversold condition, all right, which means it's due to go upwards. And guess what happened, you guys? The next candle that formed, for uh, the next daily candle that formed, it started to go away from that oversold condition and started going up towards the neutral area and break, broke through that neutral area and started going upwards towards you know, you guessed it, the overbought area, okay? So realistically here, Bollinger Bands are another great option to identify overbought and oversold levels as well, all right? Now, the next one that I wanna talk about here is going to be, um, let's see here, we'll go ahead and talk about moving averages, all right? So let me go ahead and get, uh, get rid of the Bollinger Bands and we will turn on the moving averages again, okay? So with moving averages, moving averages basically smooth out price data over a specific period, all right? Which typically makes it easier to identify trends. Um, two common moving averages used in crypto trading are the simple moving average and the exponential moving average, all right? When the price of a cryptocurrency crosses above its moving average, it can signal an overbought condition, all right? And on the other hand, when the price crosses below the moving average, it can indicate an oversold condition. So as you guys can see right now, with the time that we're in right now, we've got both moving averages above the current price right now. So we are typically, you know, based on that alone, uh, we can typically guesstimate that we are, you know, realistically hardcore oversold right now. All right. So now as far as oh and then here's another example for when it's overbought as you guys can clearly see you know price up here was above both moving averages so realistically we were typically you know according to that or based on that we're overbought right there which is as you guys can see it started to you know drop after that happened so that is another good way to identify overbought and oversold conditions all right, now, the last one that I want to talk about here is going to be volume analysis, all right? Here's the thing. Analyzing trading volume can provide valuable insights into overbought and oversold conditions. A sudden surge in trading volume during a price rally could signal overbought conditions, as it, you know, realistically, as it may indicate excessive buying activity. Now, on the other hand, a significant increase in volume during a downtrend um, might suggest oversold conditions as it may signal, you know, obviously panic selling, which we've, which we've, we've all seen. Um, so as you guys can clearly see, we've got these uh, candles going on right here. Um, you know, a big giant, you know, big giant white candle or sorry, red candle right here. Well, for me, it's white um, could indicate obviously that, you know, we are reaching hardcore oversold territories. Okay. And obviously, you know, right here, right here we'll go with this one right here we've got two giant uh two giant green candles in a row that pretty much could signify that you know we are you know <laughs> reaching oversold or sorry overbought territories sorry the green or sorry the red the red candle indicates over oversold oversold territory green overbought sorry i get confused sometimes because my bars are white instead of red all right but realistically here, you guys, uh, for me personally, I don't realistically use the volume indicator uh, whatsoever. I don't even use it to try to find uh, overbought and oversold levels. Me personally, I love using both the Bollinger Bands and the RSI to um, kind of tell me if things are overbought or oversold. Uh, they're pretty much the easiest ones to use. But 
Um, overall here, you guys, uh, recognizing overbought and oversold levels in crypto trading is very, very essential for making informed decisions and managing your risk as well. However, all right, however, it's important to note here that no single indicator or method is honestly foolproof, as we all know, and false signals do occur, all right? Therefore, it's wise to use a combination of technical analysis tools and consider other factors as well, such as, you know, fundamental analysis and market sediment to make good trading decisions, all right? And in addition, one more thing to remember here is that the um, crypto markets are obviously highly, highly volatile and prices can change rapidly. We all know this. We've all seen it. You know, as a trader, it's crucial to stay disciplined, set stop losses, and continuously, continuously educate yourself to refine your trading strategy, all right? Now, if any of you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video or anything that's related to altcoins or trading in general, feel free to go ahead and reach out to me in my free community Discord server with the link in the video description down below this video. But overall here, you guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this video. So I will go ahead and wrap this video up. But before you guys leave, go ahead and make sure, well, if you haven't already, go ahead and make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a new crypto and altcoin video from me on a regular basis. And hey guys, with that said, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys in the comment section down below of my future videos.